Liberty, and this is our 2020 History Day Fair project about the events leading up to the American Revolution. Hope you guys enjoy. Hello there. Hello. Looking for my father's will. His name was Sean Harsing. Sean. I'll be right back. are supposed to be free. But with the new stamp act from Britain, it will not be free. I'm not paying for that. Okay, you have a wonderful day. The stamp act was a British act passed in 1765 that set a that said that all printed documents, such as wills and deeds and everything like that, had to carry one stamp. And that stamp, had to, there was a tax for that. You had to pay extra for that stamp. So like something like a deed or a will that would normally be free, you, you now had to pay for a stamp that had to be on there. For anything under the sun. Under the sun. Yeah, I'm not paying for that. Okay, wonderful. Give it back to me. You have a nice day. Acts were passed from about 1767 to 1768, and they taxed a lot of things, from tea, oil, paper, all the way to paint colors, and pretty much anything that was sold, they had a tax for it. Hey! Get out of here! Get out of here! The Boston Massacre happened March 5, 1770. It's when British colonists were throwing snowballs, rocks, even oyster cells at the British Redcoats because they were mad about their taxes. And it caused the British Redcoats to panic, get angry, and they shot upon the crowd, killing five colonists. My friends and I have come up with an idea. You know the new, the boat that just came in from oh, the yes. boat. Oh yes, Yes, we are going to dress up like Indians, put these on our head, and dump all the tea overboard to show them a sign that we are not giving up. Sounds like a wonderful idea, sir. Thank you, sir. New tax was passed on tea called the Tea Act that infuriated lots and lots of colonists. And some colonists decided to dress up like Red Indians and board a vessel carrying lots of crates of tea called Dartmouth and throw all those crates of tea overboard. This event became known as the Boston Tea Party. To have soup and live in your house for as long as I want. So, uh, no, get out of my house. What are you doing? You may not have to sit on my dog. Uh oh, I'm sorry, but I shall keep him now. He is fine. Get out of my house. Bake now. me soup right now. Okay. Okay.
was introduced in 1774, which allowed all British redcoats, when needed, to go in a colonist's house for food and comfort. Look at this. So what are your plans to stop these taxes? Hmm. I plan that we can take some British soldiers hostage until they agree to our demands. Well, that would just start even more of a problem. Yes, yes. Say. What would your plans be, Delgate? I would, personally, I would boycott all of their things that they tax, not buy anything, and then eventually they'll stop because they'll be making no money from us. Yeah, so that sounds like quite a wonderful idea. Okay. See? Do you think? First Continental Congress was held, was held on September 5th, 1774, and they discussed how to, what to do in response of all the British acts. Henry was a lawyer from Virginia, and he was very outspoken about the need for the colonies to be independent from Great Britain. One day, he held a speech in 1775, and everyone got really rowdy about it, and it was making a lot of people anxious to be independent. The are coming! The regulars are coming! The regulars are coming! The regulars are coming! Ah! No more knocks. The Rachels are coming! They're coming! Hi! They're coming! The Rachels are coming! On the evening of April 18th, 1775, Paul Revere and William Dawes were summoned to ride on to Lexington and Concord to warn the inhabitants that the British troops were coming to arrest Samuel Adams and John Hancock. Get out of here with your axe and your tax. I don't leave it here. Peace. You want peace? In April 1775, out just outside of Concord, British troops and American colonists were arguing at each other and out of the mist someone fired and that was essentially the shot heard around the world which marked the beginning of the American Revolution. Come in. Hello sir, what seems to be business? Hello sir, I have gathered some of the Congress to sign on the issue of independence. Yes, this plan has been submitted by Mr. Thomas Jefferson. Seems now that independence from Great Britain may truly be the only way to go. Let's start with Cong Congress by introducing ourselves. I'm William Johnson. I'm the delegate from Maryland. I'm Brady Mayville, delegate from Virginia. These are my colleagues. All right. Let us read forth this Declaration of Independence. Why don't the court's human events become necessary for one people to dissolve the political band? He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies within the covenant of our legislatures. He is attached to remain the military independent and superior to the civil power. He has combined with us to object a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledgedly and, un, and unacknowledged by our laws. For in this declaration, with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. So. Okay, ready to vote. Let's now vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. They said aye. All opposed? The motion is passed. Please send this letter to King George immediately. Yes, sir. Come in. 
yeah. from the colonists of America. I don't know why they went now. Not quite sure. Alright. The unanimous unanimous deck. They seem to be declaring their declaration of independence. What? They're declaring their independence. They're declaring their independence? They, they, they really think they'd be better off with their own country than with us. You want me to get General Get Cornwallis. General Cornwallis in here now! Sir, what is this? What is this? The colonists in America are declaring their independence. They can't do that. They don't have anybody to sign on it. Oh. Well, apparently, they just did. Do you want me to call them to attack? Yes, go and make New York. Now, get your army. No. Declaration of Independence was signed July 2nd, 1776, and ratified on July 4th, 1776. It came in three parts. The first part was a statement about what they believe to be the natural rights of all people and the purpose of the government over them. The second part was a list of grievances or problems they had toward King George. And the third was their actual declaration of independence, them saying to the British that we want to be our own nation and we're going to be our own nation and we're declaring independence from you. And we need something to keep these people together. We need something, something to keep the colonies together. Yeah. And I propose that we can give them some freedoms yeah. so they'll stay with us. I think for our First Amendment, we should have the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the freedom of assembly. Yes, and the freedom of press, so the press. news there, so they want, and the freedom of petition, so that yes. people can say stuff and ask stuff of the government. Yes. All right. We'll just put that down as Amendment 1. And I think that this should be a separate amendment, Amendment number 2, of the right to bear arms. Uh, yes, we should have the right to bear arms because it can protect us from a government if they're in mean stuff to us. Mm -hmm. And I also think for our third amendment that we should have the right to kick those soldiers out of our house. They cannot be in our house for free and we don't have to give them soup. Yes, whether in times of peace or in times of war, we, we, they can't be in here. We don't want them here. We don't want them in our houses. All right, so let's put that no quartering act from okay. now until the day we die. All right, I think that's enough for today. The Articles of Confederation was signed 1781. It was basically a rough draft of the Constitution that we have now. It was weaker than the Constitution. And it was basically, it was made of the Bill of Rights, the ten amendments that we use now of all 13 colonies and what they would use. We think this is related to the theme breaking barriers because this is literally how America, the new country, was formed. And we think this relates to civics and economics because this is the foundation of, of America and how the American government was formed. And we think it relates to economics because the reason these people were getting upset was about taxes. And taxes are part of economics. And we also think this relates to economics because this was the foundation of the American economy.